like that, we should run toward it, and that's what we're prepared to do uh, today. I would uh, like to thank uh, Senator Desaulnier for uh, coming out of the building at this moment. There's a lot going on uh, behind us, obviously, but uh, he introduced this bill to uh, pull for a constitutional convention months ago. This just didn't happen today, and uh, we want to urge uh, him and his colleagues in the Senate, as well as the members of the Assembly, and I believe they'll be represented here today as well, to push forward within the legislature for a constitutional convention. Only the legislature under the current California Constitution can provide for a constitutional convention with a two-thirds vote of each house. And we're asking Senator DeSaulnier to discuss that today. We have drafted some preliminary language, and it is just a draft for how a constitutional convention should take place. That is based on input uh, we have received from many, many meetings throughout the state, one of them here in Sacramento a couple of months ago, attended by 400 people. A lot of good ideas, but more ideas to come. So there's nothing set in stone, but we wanted to provide the legislature with some guide points we've had from the input we've received from a lot of very, very smart people and very concerned people around California who have a lot of good sense of history of how this has been done in other places and who bring goodwill to the process. So let me introduce a very good friend and a very, very competent, uh, forward-thinking legislator, Mark DeSonde. And I want to give you this, Mark, and tell you to read it carefully, of course. consider it, and then do everything that we say. <laughs> Well, those last comments were a big improvement over the previous ones. I guess I'm one of the old bums. Um, and I thought I was going to be the only bum, but I would like to acknowledge uh, that, that we've been joined by other members of the Assembly, and I want to acknowledge Allison Huber, who's wisely decided to stay in the crowd. Um, <laughs> let me say that uh, since Jim quoted Jefferson, uh, Jefferson once said that a little revolution in America in the future when the nation was being founded would be a good thing. And although crowd doesn't look like a group of revolutionaries, I think, in fact, we are. Um, there are a number of things actually happening with inside the building that are attempting to deal with this. Some of them, I think, are incremental and half measures, in my view. Uh, I think the time for incrementalism and half measures are past. It's been passed for some time. But this wonderful opportunity, this crisis that we have, actually, I think, is this sort of moment in history where we could actually change, change the governance of California. Um, the minority leader in the assembly, Sam Blakesley, has introduced a resolution to call for a constitutional convention, and Sam and I have had conversations. I have as well. I've introduced uh, two amendments to do an indirect initiative and also to put sunsets on initiatives to try to start dealing with the problems of the initiative system, in my view. Uh, today, the Senate Rules Committee will approve a committee that I asked for, that I'm chair of in the Senate, uh, Select Committee on Constitutional Reform. So there are efforts within the building. Having said that, I don't think the changes we need will come from inside the building. And it's not because there aren't wonderful, terrific people inside that building, both as staff and as members, irregardless of party affiliation. They're here for the right reason. But it's the systemic problems that keep us from governing. Most Californians don't realize that we, the legislature and the governor, only have control over 10% of the total budget. That's why we had to go out and ask for changes, because the rest of it has been set by we, the voters, in the formulas that drive our budget decisions. So just to get to that point where we can put this on the ballot required historic efforts in both houses, the longest sessions in both houses, to get to the point where we could ask the voters to change. Other states do this all the time. Connecticut and New Jersey, I believe, actually ask the voters every 10 years, should we have a constitutional convention? Some states ask it every year. This isn't that revolutionary. Uh, but the legislature has to let go. We have to provide leadership by letting go. Because federal courts have said the legislature can only call the convention and give it some direction and decide how the delegates will be formed. But we have to let the citizens and direct democracy reframe the structure. And in my view, there are two big areas. The initiative system that was started over 130 years ago by Hiram Johnson to take power away from vested interest and give it to the citizens. And ironically, 130 years later, the opposite has happened, in my view. Vested interests have hijacked the initiative system. Of the 24 states with an initiative system, California has by far and away the mo most robust, easy to manipulate system, and in my view, needs to be changed. And that's part of the honest discussion that the convention would have. Taxes and how we actually pay for and how we perform public services, I think, are another big part. It's not a question of too much taxes or too little taxes, in my view. The Tax Institute actually says that Californians are right in the middle when you take the aggregate of taxes in terms of what we pay. So we need to look at 
how we pay taxes and the connection between the, the services provided. And as part of that, I don't think, and the Tax Commission is doing a good job that Speaker Bass called, to look at that issue. Heard enough? No. It's turned the wrong way. Thank you. Sorry. Um, it's nice to see you all sweltering the heat for a change, by the way. Edit that out. But just to look at taxes, I don't think will do the job because you have to actually look at the services provided. We have wonderful employees in the public sector in California doing heroic work, but my view, those people go into that work because they want, they're motivated by altruistic purposes. But we should measure their performance, and California doesn't do that, I think we should do that. And lastly, let me just say that I am firmly convinced, as I said earlier, and I, I actually wanted to introduce this uh, resolution when I first got elected to the Assembly. I talked to a good friend of mine, a constitutional expert, Bruce Kane from Berkeley, and he told me, he said, I shouldn't introduce it because the powers to be would crush the effort and do the same to me. And it's just wonderful to be here, in spite of the crisis, to be here with the Bay Area Council and others to reframe California. Another great founder said, Thomas Paine, at one of the darkest points of this country's history, that he said, these are the times that try our souls, but they're also not the time for sunshine patriots. They're times for people of stout of heart. We have this incredible opportunity to reframe California, to literally change how we govern. He knew the historic opportunity when he said, we have it within our power to make the world anew. And I think that's what we're about here in California today, all of us here that we want to make California anew because we know it doesn't work. And it's not because of the people who are engaged in the system, it's the structure of governance. This constitution was passed when there were a million people in the state of California. It's been amended 500 times, more than any other state's constitution. It's time for a wholesale look, and it's time for the California legislature to demonstrate its leadership by letting the voters lead us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you very much. I could not agree more.